Y'all listen, I'm going to try not to keep you long. I just want to get on here and tell you this. You've got to be a faith walker. Okay, in order for you to walk by faith, your mind has got to be right. You have got to have the mind of Christ, which means what? You got to have that word in you. Why is it important? Because y'all, if you are a faith walker, which means what? You ain't got to see it to believe it. That means you know where your help cometh from. You know who your source really is. You know who your father, who your shepherd is. You know where your protection comes from. You know where your peace comes from. You know where your joy comes from. You know where real love comes from. And therefore, whatever the enemy tries to work against you, it won't work against you. Why? Because you already know the truth of it all that God is your every single thing. Okay? He's your everything. The word of God says this, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And that is true. But listen to this, it's only true when you have the mind of Christ. It's only true when you have the mind of Christ. I need for y'all to understand this. This is what God uh, spoke to me the other night as I was driving. God told me this. The devil don't care nothing about the things in your life. He don't care about how much money you have. He don't care about your marriage. He don't care about your health. He doesn't care about your children, anything that's concerning you. He don't care about those things because he's not after those things, okay? Did you hear me? He's not after those things. What the enemy is after, he's after your mind, okay? But the enemy knows in order to get to your mind, he's got to attack those things, even though he don't care about them, okay? So what he'll do, he'll play the game of launching an arrow, launching a fiery dart, launching a weapon at your marriage, launching a weapon at your health, launching a weapon at your finances, at your children, launching it at things that are, uh, that is in your arena to get a reaction out of you. And if you're not rooted, booted, and suited in the word of God, having the mind of Christ, then what will happen, he will plant a seed of doubt in your mind. He will then plant a seed of fear in your mind. And what he does is try to get those seeds to marinate. In other words, to get you to think on those seeds of fear and doubt because of the weapon that was formed against you. And if you meditate on what is happening around you, what you see with your physical eyes, what you're hearing with your physical ears, what you're sensing through the feelings and the emotions, then what will happen is that you'll begin to believe the lie. You'll begin to believe the lie that the enemy can overtake you, okay? And what then will happen is this. You'll then get to the space to where you're not walking by faith. You'll end up walking by sight. Why? Because you'll get to a place where you say, I won't believe that God is a healer until I'm healed. I won't believe that God is a provider until I see this amount of money in my account. I won't believe that God is this, that, and the other until I see it with my eyes. Listen, God don't work like that. God, what pleases him is faith. Please don't be like the disciple Thomas. Remember Thomas? He was like, I don't believe that Jesus has risen from the dead. I got to see this for myself with my physical eyes. So what happened? Jesus came to Thomas, right? He showed him the holes in his hand. He showed him where he was pierced in his side, right? But you know what Jesus told Thomas? Jesus said, blessed are they that believe, right? And did not have to see it. And God is saying, when you believe and you don't got to see it, God said, you already blessed because you already understand that it's already settled in heaven. God said, my word is settled in heaven. That's why he said, in earth as it is in heaven, let God's will be done. The thing is, if you got to see it to believe it, that's you saying that it ain't already done in heaven. And that ain't real faith. God said he needs some faith walkers in this earth. He needs some real people who are really trusting in his word. Because we can talk a good game, but we really ain't walking it out. Which means what? You hearing the word, but you ain't being a doer of it. And God is saying, if you're going to quote what he say, if you're going to say, I'm a decree out of my mouth, what God has spoken. God said, you got to believe it. 
because it's already done. You don't have to see it in order to believe it. God said, just speak it. As God says, so shall my word be. What I have spoken, it shall accomplish what it's supposed to accomplish. And it shall prosper what I have sent it to. God is saying, when you speak what he said, it got to come to pass. The thing is, let me tell y'all this. What we do, we'll speak the word of God. But then when we speak the word of God, we act as if we got to perform it. We ain't got to perform nothing. We don't do the performing. We only speak. We're God's mouthpiece. We're his temple. That's why God said it's not by our might nor by our power, but only by his spirit. Which means what? We can't do nothing. It's not in our power. It's not in our might. God said, just let, let him work through us. Speak what he has spoken and let it be. Because we don't perform it. That's why the word of God says is, blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance, right? Of what God has spoken. This, was, this is what Gabriel was saying unto Mary when he was telling Mary that she shall be with child. And it said, blessed is she that believeth. For there shall be a performance, not Mary performing it, okay, but God performing it. The only thing you got to do is believe it. Have the mind of Christ. Have that word working in you and stand on it, whether you see it or not. Listen, y'all, my father, he passed away in 1998. He had cancer. Guess what? God's still a healer. You hear me? God is still a healer. Guess what, y'all? Way back when ago, I had a car repo. Guess what? God is still a provider. He's still a provider. What the enemy would want you to think is that if God don't come through the way you think he's supposed to come through, then God is not the I am that I am. The devil is a liar. God is still the I am that I am. He still is. That's what true faith is. Whether you get what you want or you don't get what you want, God is still God. And he don't ever change. Don't let the enemy trick you because he's trying to trick some of y'all to make you think that because you did not get that position on that job, that God don't keep his promises, that God ain't who he say he is. Just because you still, the doctor still saying you have diabetes and you still have um, cancer and this and that and the other, the enemy got you over there thinking, well, maybe God really is not a healer. Maybe I shouldn't believe in this. Maybe I should go to sage. Maybe I should go to new age. Maybe I should go to a, a witch doctor. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Who are you going to trust? Who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe the word of man? Are you going to believe the word of the enemy? God said, let every man be a liar and his word be the truth. God is looking for some true faith walkers because we are easily able to open our mouth to say who God is. God is my Lord and Savior. But when it comes for you to really stand on his word, you wavering, you double minded. God said, no, you ain't playing basketball. Don't be double minded over there. Stand flat footed on the word of God, having your mind focused because God said he has not given us the spirit of fear, but he's given us power, love, and that of a sound mind. Sound mind means you know where you're going. Sound mind means you know who God is. Sound mind means you trust God all the way. That's why it says what? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge God and he shall direct your path. He's going to do the directing. You're not the director. You're not the director. You're the follower. You're the sheep. God is the shepherd. He has the rod and the staff that's going to comfort you. He's the one that's in control, not you. You're not a Messiah. You're not in control. You're not in control. God is. And as soon as you line up to what God wants for your life, it's going to be easier for you. It's going to be so much easier for you. To where you won't have to carry the heavy of Babasaya. You won't have to carry the heavy weight on your shoulder. Babasaya. You won't have to carry the heavy weight on your shoulder. God will lift that burden. You're trying to follow God and take control. God said no. You're either going to give it to him or you're not. You're either going to take it to the altar and leave it there. Or you're just going to keep it. God said, come unto me, all you are, who are heavy laden and who are labor, who are labor and heavy laden. I will give you rest. God said, give it to him. Give it to him. Let him take the whole load. 
the whole load. He said he will give us rest. He's our shepherd. We shall not want. He maketh us to lie down in green pastures, right? So let God do what he does best. You don't have control. It's not in your hand. You didn't even wake yourself up this morning. You didn't even create yourself. You didn't. You don't even know what's going to happen in the next second, the next minute, the next hour, the next week, the next month, the next year. You don't know, but God knows. So let him lead the way and you just follow. And however it looks, you just trust God. That's what real faith is. No matter what it looks like, I'm going to stand on the word. That's why a lot of people have a lot of problems in their marriages because they're looking to see how things are looking to them in order for them to trust. That ain't real trust. That ain't real faith. You either going to believe that your marriage is the real deal, that that man really loves you, or you're not. And it's the same way with God. You either going to believe that God really loves you and that he got you your, your back, or he not. Or that he don't. It's up to you. But it starts up here. And what the enemy is after. He's after your mind. Don't give him your mind. And the only way he can't have it. Is that you are in your word. Standing flat foot. On the word of God. Knowing who God really is in your life. And don't waver. Regardless of what it looks like. Okay. Remember Peter. Remember Peter. People, Peter was walking on the water. Until he took his eyes. Off of God. Right? You got to stay flat-footed, having the mind of Christ. Focus. Your focus is God and God alone. Remember, Job, the enemy wanted his mind. He didn't want those things that he had. He just wanted to, wanted to attack the things of Job to prove a point that God, if I take away everything that Job has, he's going to he's gonna deny you. He's not going to allow you to be his God anymore. But what happened? Job knew who he was. And he knew who God was to him. And therefore, even though the enemy attacked everything in his life, Job stood firm in the word of God. And who God was to him. The I am that I am. And you've got to do the same. Being a true faith walker. Walking by faith and not by sight. Y'all, I'm already at 12 minutes. I got to go. Y'all know I love you. But most of all, Jesus loves you too and more. And listen, if you have not gotten my cookbook, go on over to Amazon and pre-order, okay? It's called The King Has Graced. You type that in, you'll, you'll get it. You can go to Barnes & Nobles as well, okay? Go ahead and pre-order. I got to go, y'all. Y'all know I love you, but Jesus loves you too and more. Y'all be blessed. I'll talk to y'all soon. And thank y'all so much for all the support that you